This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Life Coach Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 91, Emotional Fatigue. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there, welcome in today, wherever you are, whatever you're up to. How are you doing this week? Things here are going fairly well. We just celebrated my dad's 72nd birthday. And by celebrate, I mean my mom did a hilarious ding dong dash. (laughs) And she left spaghetti, which is my dad's favorite thing, and spice cake on my porch. And then she did a ding dong dash at my brother's house, which is just down the road from my house. And then we all had dinner quote unquote, together, together, but apart. So you know how we do in pandemic times. So how are your celebrations coming along these days? I feel like we got a bit of a reprieve over the summer because we were able to gather outside a bit more. But I tell you here in Kansas City, it's definitely turning into fall. And there are as many cold days as there are not. It's getting way harder to plan our outdoor gatherings. So although our fire pit has been used more already this season than in the past few years, like combined. (laughs) So I guess there are some good things, lots of s'mores and stuff. And now we're all staring down Thanksgiving and holiday plans. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that here on the podcast, what that looks like this year for sure. But I would love to hear from you how are you celebrating? What are you planning on? What does it look like this year for you? So for us, our tentative plan right now for Thanksgiving is that we're going to do a similar ding dong dash and prepare food for our extended family and share together that way. From everything that we've heard and read, that still seems safe. But I have to admit something to you here. (laughs) My husband and I, we've been together for, well, this will be our 12th Thanksgiving together. And we have never had a Thanksgiving just us. It's one of those good, bad things about having pretty much all of our extended family so close that we usually don't travel for the holidays. I guess we've gone to Ohio a couple of times to see some of my in-laws for Thanksgiving. But it also means we usually don't get the holidays to ourselves, like no holidays, like not Mother's Day, not Christmas, not Thanksgiving, birthdays, nothing. So there's a lot of going, there's a lot of being together, there's a lot of doing, preparing, cooking, organizing kids and pies <laughs> and gifts and timing. And I love love, love the holidays. And of course, there's a part of me that's super bummed that this year looks like this, just like I know for all of you, I'm sure that there's some specific heartache that you're experiencing as well. And I wish we could safely be together inside for the whole day like we usually are. But I have to admit to you that there's another part of me that's kind of relishing the idea of having just my kids and my husband at home, the four of us for Thanksgiving, that it will just be us. We can watch the parade in the morning. We can start cooking. We can go for a long walk by the lake. I can read and read and read and read. (laughs) And then we can eat in our pajamas all day. I definitely wouldn't want this every year. And I'm sure at multiple points throughout the day on Thanksgiving, I'm going to feel super bummed that the pandemic means that we aren't with all of our people. But I guess I'm 
absolutely also prepared to find the good in this because it feels pretty dang good, at least from here. Bittersweet, I guess, maybe, but absolutely okay. So anyway, that was a long ramble. I would love to hear from you, though. How, how are you feeling about things? How are you thinking about the holidays and your plans and how are you celebrating? I know we're all all over the place on this, but I'd love to hear from you. Do you have questions about this? What should I talk about as I prepare some holiday podcasts? Give me your suggestions. Are you struggling? Are you good? So reach out to me. You can reach out to me on Instagram. I'm at McCormick. I'd love to get a DM from you and hear your thoughts and questions. All right. So speaking of the pandemic, speaking of things that are intense and can seem a bit overwhelming, I want to talk about being wiped out today. There's a real sense of exhaustion right now. Pandemic fatigue is no joke, especially at this point. And me, being the coach that I am, wanted to do a spin on pandemic fatigue and talk about emotional fatigue with you today. Just to bring some awareness to this, to help you identify what's going on for you, what your experience is like right now, and what we can all do to support ourselves in the face of pandemic slash emotional fatigue. Yeah? So we all know about physical fatigue, of course, when you get physically tired and need to take a break or just go to sleep. So there's that. And our emotional fatigue can definitely add to physical fatigue, right? Maybe you find yourself needing a bit more sleep right now because of the ongoing pandemic, perhaps, and or because especially if you are in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, because of the shorter days, the colder weather, that winter season of restoration and recovery and recuperation that's just starting, right? And you're also familiar, so that's physical fatigue. You're also familiar with the idea of mental fatigue. Like think back to when you took a standardized test, like back in high school, how you walked out of that experience just totally drained. It takes a lot of caloric energy to think and figure and answer questions like that for sure. And we experience this too in our everyday lives, like outside of standardized tests, when we go through lots of decision making or trying to understand and make sense of the news and the headlines that are coming at us. When we try to take in the information that we believe we need in order to stay safe and healthy. There's certainly a lot of mental fatigue going on right now. And emotional fatigue certainly plays into this as well, right? Emotional fatigue adds another layer of exhaustion to the mental gymnastics we're all going through. So emotional fatigue, let's focus here today because that's what we do around here. My, <laughs> my kids do this hilarious impersonation of me <laughs> where they say, hi, I'm Kelly McCormick and today we're going to talk about feelings. <laughs> so cute. But also, hell yeah, today we're going to talk about feelings. So what is emotional fatigue? You know how I like to go to the dictionary and get a definition, but this is a term that's not in the dictionary. So instead, you're going to get my opinion of what emotional fatigue is. All right. So quick story to define this. My dad is a metallurgical engineer. Have you ever heard of that before? (laughs) It's an engineer that focuses specifically on metals. Now, not that I know overly much about it. I was an electrical engineer, which had very little to do with metals. But you pick up a few things when you live with a guy who's really into this stuff. And one of the things I managed to glean along the way is that metals fatigue. So think about like bending a credit card back and forth over and over and over and over again, right? Eventually it'll snap in two, right? Same thing happens with metals. So bridges, structures, nails, right? Think anything made of metal. It's one of the big things metallurgical engineers focus on, metal fatigue. And I think about emotional fatigue 
in a similar way, that when we are stuck on the same emotional frequency and we vibrate at that energetic level in an ongoing way, we tend to snap, right? Emotions are energy in motion, e-motion. And that energy moves along a specific frequency, like a radio wave, right? Or a certain note played on the piano. And when you, your body, when you vibrate at a certain frequency, kind of nonstop, you're like that credit card bending back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You wind up fatiguing. There's a fault line that is so worn out that it becomes very fragile and it can completely break apart if we're not careful. So, okay, let's zoom out and consider this year, 2020. 20, the pandemic, the election, the ongoing climate crisis, the violence against black people. We have a lot going on. There's a definite intensity to this year. And most of us vibrate along the same emotion, right? Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's overwhelm. Maybe it's worry. Maybe it's anxiety. Most of us have an emotional go-to that we reach for when the going gets rough. And this year, most of us have been hitting that emotional go-to frequency over and over and over again. We are fatiguing along those emotional lines. Make sense? That looping and churning on the same emotion day after day, month after month, it's a lot. All right, let's zoom out further. Let's consider pre-pandemic life. So think back to a year that felt pretty normal. Maybe 2018, 2019. Hell, maybe you need to rewind a bit. (laughs) Go back to like 2015 even. Whatever feels right to you. But think about your emotional landscape at that time. Like the most ordinary week that you've ever had. I think of us, our bodies our minds, our hearts, as our own personal ecosystem. And all of our experiences and the people in our lives and our situations and life circumstances and our own behaviors and emotions and actions, it's all part of the weather in that personal ecosystem. It's what passes through, right? The days and nights, the seasons, the storms, the beautiful days. It's all the weather that passes through the vastness and the enormity that is you. Yeah? And in that most ordinary day, in that most ordinary week, we allow all of the weather to come through. It just keeps passing. Some days have lots of clouds. There are lots of thoughts. Maybe things seem very busy in our minds and our bodies. Maybe other days are more clear less windy, a bit simpler. The point is, the weather systems just keep passing by. There are more and more and more, and as they come, they go. There's that saying, let what comes come, let what goes go. And that's a normal day in a normal week. Always more is coming. More experiences, more situations, more life. And we let the emotions pass on through. There goes frustration. There goes excitement. There's some sadness and some joy and anger. Oh, there's annoyance. All coming, all going. Now, come back to this moment, this time, right? This era. And the weather patterns, (laughs) it's like freaking Groundhog Day. (laughs) in our ecosystems right now. More of the same all day, every day, every week, every month at this point. It's like we just keep ringing the same emotional bells over and over again. And when those personal ecosystems aren't full of change and new emotions and flow, they fatigue. So think What would it be like to get stuck in a season? Like if it were perpetually fall and Mother Nature just kept trying to wring more autumn out of autumn. 
it would fatigue, right? You could see like we would run out of fall. The trees would say, no more leaves. I'm done, (laughs) right? But what if we were always stuck in summer? Things would dry out. They wouldn't rest and go dormant like they do in the winter and then renew and bloom again, right? There's fatigue. So our sense of emotional fatigue right now is very real. It's very much what's happening pretty much across the board. We are hitting that same frequency over and over again. So what do we do? I have a couple of ideas for you. Number one, allow yourself to feel how you feel. Now, this sounds easier than it is to do. (laughs) In my experience coaching people through this process, I know this sounds easier than it is to actually do. Most of us don't know how to feel our feelings. We know how to resist our feelings. So see if you can find where you're pushing against your emotions. Maybe you're hitting an escape button to numb your feelings and you'll find a place where you're in resistance instead of acceptance. So to overcome emotional fatigue, we need to truly feel how we feel. Now, I also know this sounds a bit counterintuitive. It seems as if it would be more fatiguing to go all in and feel an emotion all the way through. But I promise you, when you allow the emotions to flow through your body, they dissipate. They have a shelf life and they will naturally expire, but only if we accept them. All right, so that's number one. Feel how you feel. Next, lean back. Whatever has you caught up, whatever is triggering you, whatever sends you into a mind spin and emotional upheaval, lean back from it. Maybe this means turning off the news and silencing the headline notifications on your phone. Maybe this means taking a break from social media for a week or a month. Maybe this means leaning out of relationships that tend to spin in negativity and stress, spending less time and energy involved in that drama. Maybe this means cultivating a still point and returning to it, reaching in like it's your own personal home base again and again. When you allow yourself to feel how you feel, you'll be with reality. You'll be aligned with what's showing up for you. And from there, you can evaluate where you want or need to lean back, where you can cut down on the drama. Maybe it's the stimulation. Maybe it's the chaos. Some networks, some people, some situations love drama. That's fine. But you get to choose whether you want to be a part of it or not. All right, lastly, a lot of emotional fatigue comes up for us when we time travel in our minds. Our minds like to travel back to the past and either replay conversations, replay headlines, replay situations, actions. We either find fault with it, we hope it doesn't happen again, and then we use those as a weapon against ourselves. Have you noticed? (laughs) This is not great. And we time travel to the future, right? To this fantasy land that doesn't even exist. And we try to control things out there so that they meet our current preferences and our expectations. So the past only exists in your mind. It's over. The future isn't here yet. So there's truly nothing to manipulate or to change or to control. By going to the past or the future... In your mind, you, of course, miss the present. And this moment, this one right here, this is reality. What's real and true for you right now? How are you feeling right now? What's coming up for you right now? Maybe this moment is quiet and everything is fine. Great. Now, maybe this moment is a little hectic. 
and things aren't so great. That's okay too. Because here's the deal. It's far less fatiguing to stay right here with what is than it is to try to control how you're feeling by time traveling in your mind to places that either no longer exist or don't exist yet. That is what can wear you out. So quick recap. Number one, feel how you feel. Accept and allow your emotions. That's first. Then lean back if you need to, right? Find circumstances or people or situations that spin up drama or stimulation and lean back. Create some space. Give yourself some room. And then be here in this moment. Stop trying to time travel. You, your emotions, your sense of self, you're here, right here in this moment. The past is over. The future is not here yet. So stay here with what's real. It's far less fatiguing. Okay, that's it for today. I hope this helps. I hope this meets you where you're at and gives you an idea of how to take care of yourself. Maybe even come out of a sense of fatigue, emotional fatigue right now. If you could take a moment before we go, please... Please, please rate and review the podcast. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Just while you're here, while you're thinking of it, that would be great. It would help our other friends out there who are experiencing their own emotional fatigue. It would help them find the show and help them take care of themselves, which is what we all need, right? A world of people doing this work. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will see you at the same time, same place again next week. And until then, everybody take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, and worry? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you are creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations. There's a private community forum to share and get support. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash Fierce Calm Project.